Welcome back, you guys. Hi, guys. Hello again. This is episode 12. Wow. 12. Can you believe it? No. We've officially made it. To, well, we made it to double digits a couple weeks ago, but you know what I mean. Twelve's meant. big. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. This is Mom's the word, where Mom knows best, or at least she's trying her best. She's trying her best. I'm Paige, and I'm Cindy. And today we have a very special guest with us, Maggie. If you'll introduce yourself. Hello, it's Maggie. <laughs> at Maggie, Maggie eats. eats. Yes, sorry, Maggie eats. <laughs> I'm so excited that you're here. I am very excited. Uh, just the fact that you guys even thought to even ask me to be here is just an honor so of course I'm our grateful. fellow like texan mama i there know we go. and you've never been to dallas i've never been to dallas that's wild that's, to me isn't that weird <laughs> yes. I, yeah that's very weird was the traffic worse here yes <laughs> yes <laughs> mm-hmm. compared mm-hmm. to she's in the houston area so that is true don't know. and i'm like 20 minutes outside houston so i rarely have to deal with like the houston hustle and bustle mm-hmm. so yes the traffic was when I got into Dallas, it was it was interesting, but <laughs> I made it. I made it. So Maggie is a mama as yes. well. Yes. Where How many really? kids do you have? Three. Three Ooh, kids. Three kids. Their ages. Um, my oldest just turned twelve yesterday. Aww, happy birthday, happy Olivia! Birthday. Hey. Happy birthday. Um, and then I've got a seven-year-old, and then I've got a two-year-old. So busy. 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 We know. Mm-hmm. Very busy. Very much so. So I am really excited to have you here, and you have such a. Um, journey that you've been on yes and I'm excited to get to know that more so could you give us a little bit more of who you are what you've been through and what they could see like if they went back to your social media just kind of tell your story a little bit for everybody yeah um so my name is Maggie I'm 34 years old um I'm from the Houston area I started TikTok about uh two years ago in 2021 um and most of my content is um it's food it's Mm -hmm. recipes it's cooking it's eating um because I love food. I'm a foodie. Yeah. Um, and then over the past year, I got sober. Um, there's a lot of um, challenges, ups and downs. A lot of tears have been shed over this past year. And um, yeah, I got sober and it has been one of the hardest years of my life, but it's been the most rewarding absolutely the most rewarding years of my life so yeah, yeah. i bet so you're coming up on one year one year november 13th is amazing my yeah amazing. congratulations thank you i appreciate it it's yes. been awesome so you were on tiktok yeah not sober not sober and yes. no one knew to no be one fair knew. i yeah. followed maggie mm-hmm. before you yeah. actually came out before you went to rehab because you disappeared yeah. for mm-hmm. a, a little while, while. <laughs> yes. and then she came back and was like okay guys this is what it is yeah and i think the majority of of the watchers that you have were probably shocked. Yes. Um, One of the things that once I got out of rehab, um, I knew that if I wanted to continue TikTok, I needed to be authentic and I needed to be honest with myself, um, but with everybody else that was following along. Um, So I made the decision to come out and say, you know, I'm, 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 I've been struggling with something. I, mm-hmm. you know, I've been struggling with alcoholism for several years. Um, and I've gotten nothing but wonderful feedback and great support. And I am just so grateful for the little community that I've created on TikTok. And yeah, it's been a fun ride. Right. Yeah. Such a scary thing to share, but yes. you've been so open about. Extremely. Um, for me, just personally, I was so in the dark with my addiction. Um, you know, my husband knew that I was a heavy drinker, but he didn't know when I finally told him everything, he was, he was stunned. Um, because like I said, I was, I completely shut that out. I hid everything. I hid all of my alcohol. Um, and I also wasn't one of those, um, I wasn't very, when, when I would be drunk, it wasn't like I was falling over myself. I wasn't puking everywhere. I was just like this. That's so that's right. why it was, it was, you know, confusing for a lot of my followers to see what Maggie was before, you know, when I wasn't sober to where I am now, because there's not much of a difference. And I think that's, um, that was kind of the battle that I was dealing with is that there really wasn't much of a difference in my character. Yeah. Um, so yeah, when I told him that it was a shock and it was a shock to my family too, because again, it was something that I tried to keep very tight to myself so when i decided to let everybody know i knew that i needed to be open about it because that was just something i didn't want to feel like i needed to hide anymore right so yeah so you were uploading videos drunk oh yeah Yeah. so when i looked through your account and like you pop up on my review page i've had older videos pop up Mm -hmm. of you okay and i would have no idea right Mm -hmm. if someone was to watch you eating you know you're you're enjoy you're fun to watch yeah but you, you were just seemed quirky. Yes. Yes. And fun. Your positive energy. <laughs> cute. 
Well, so, thank you. So you hit it very well. <laughs> yes. But you were drunk in a lot of those. Mm-hmm. Can you, um, how yeah. much were you drinking a day? So it's hard to, I get this question a lot because I think people who don't, um, who aren't alcoholics or addicts, they're, they're like, okay, well, how much did you drink in a day? Mm-hmm. And it really just depended on the stash that I had because I would drink up to three gallons of vodka from my secret stash that was hidden i would buy that with cash gift cards so my husband wouldn't find out about it um and it was and it just added up so some days it was less some days it was more it just totally depended but roughly in a week it was about three gallons of vodka a week which is a lot lot. and that was the secret stash that wasn't what was in like our bar area that wasn't the normal cocktails that i was making in front of my husband or the glasses of wine that was just that was maggie's stash and yeah, I mean, how did you hide that? Um, yeah. I would put them in little water bottles, and I had little. Classic. Oh yeah, and I would. I mean, the garage. The uh, we have a barbecue pit outside. I'd pop one in there. A ton in my closet, all over the house. Sprinkled. And nobody found them ever. So, so, did you ever had a kid pop open? Thank a yes. God. Thank God, no. And that is one of those things that I reflect on, and I'm like, that could have gone so ma- That could have gone horribly. Right. Um, but no, my husband, he would stumble upon them, and I would just come up with some BS excuse, like, oh, I, I don't know. I I put that in there a long time ago. I I don't know what that's from, Um, especially when we because we moved our house uh, about three years ago. So I would have little, you know, water bottles that he would find when we got into the new house. And I'd be like, oh, I just put it in there to make transfer easier. Mm -hmm. And he's like, really? Mm -hmm. But he didn't really question it. No. And I like I said, so he knew that I was a heavier drinker. I think deep down he knew that I was struggling with it Mm -hmm. but it didn't really matter what he said to me because it I I wasn't going to change anything until I was ready to change something about it so yeah you feel that way as an addict that genuinely if they had come to you and like set up an intervention and done the whole thing mm, oh I would have gone harder really oh yeah and I mean I, I think that's for a lot of addicts and alcoholics is feeling cornered right um and feeling like there's something wrong with you and that you need to change something. And for me, I'm just a, well, F off. I'm gonna just do what I'm doing, I'm gonna go harder. Right. So I think he could see that and knowing that about me, he wasn't gonna, he wasn't gonna try and push the- Loved you through it. Yeah. Right, so once you acknowledged it, right. were your family and your husband like, well, we kind of thought so, or they were they just blind to it all? So I think they just didn't understand the severity of it. They didn't okay. know how bad that I was hiding it. Because like I said, I had little stashes everywhere, anywhere mm-hmm. and everywhere you could think of. Um, and I remember the night that I finally uh, got drunk and told my husband. And we just went through the house. And it took a while to get all the little stashes out. And it you know, it took oh, even wow. a few more days after that. Cause, you oh, know, that gave me the chills. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's an experience yeah. to go yeah. through with a partner. Yeah. To yes. be like, I need to walk through this house and show you. Mm-hmm. Like a huge deal for you to acknowledge that yeah. and be like, I'm ready. Yes. Yeah. Was he supportive through it all? Unbelievably supportive. And, you know, I get... I think the best question that I get from people who struggle, I get a lot of DMs on TikTok and Instagram and a lot of people say, you know, my family doesn't know the severity of of the problem and I don't know what to do. And the best advice I can give to somebody is when you're ready to let them know what you're struggling with, you can take the weight of the world and put a little bit on their shoulders so then you can go and work on yourself. Because once I Mm -hmm. I said that, once I said I need help and I cannot do this alone, I felt this unbelievable sense of relief, like the weight of the world was off my shoulders. It was a little bit on my husband's, it was a little bit on my family's, and it was a little bit on my friends to where I could go to rehab, work on myself for 30 days, and then come back and be the mom, be the wife, be the daughter, be the friend Mm -hmm. that I know that I could be. Mm -hmm. So. Is that how long you did in rehab for 30 days? So, well, so <laughs> the, first I, the first time, um, <laughs> I did a seven day stint for the first time and that was October, 2022. And I said, you know, if I just remove alcohol for seven days, I'll be good. Okay. Mm-hmm. And once I got home, I lasted about a week and a half and then I drank. And then my husband, I was passed out because it was the first time I drank in a couple of weeks. Right. So when I drank and he could obviously tell, he was like, I think you need to do the full 30 days. And I was like, yeah, I think, I think I need to, I think I need that. And, um, we were able to, you know, work it out with our kids schedule and, you know, my family was able to help out. So I was gone for 30 days and it was again, the hardest decision I've ever made. Mm -hmm. Um, but 
it was unbelievably worth it. Yeah. I love that after those seven days when you relapsed that he mm-hmm. wasn't like, oh my God, Maggie, yeah. Yeah. like this again. Instead he was up. like, you Absolutely. know what, let's try something else. Let's, yeah. let's do this now. Yeah. Like, that's that's really so all supportive. You can hope for. Yeah. Oh, like, I, that's so great. I am unbelievably grateful for him. He has been a huge rock in my life. So can you talk about what rehab is like from somebody's perspective yes obviously no like what is the first night like whenever you get there do they Uh, make you do certain things what's the walkthrough okay so there is a walkthrough so when you get to rehab they go through all your bags they want they check your pockets they go through your car they they check literally everything and the things that you would think that they don't need to check they absolutely check (laughs) they'll go through your shampoo bottles they'll go here before they've (laughs) been there done that they know yeah uh the first night's hard because typically you're detoxing and for me that was very hard because i had not drank Mm -hmm. in a couple years i was a daily binge drinker so um that first night was very rough um i couldn't stop shaking that was one of the symptoms of withdrawal um shaking nausea just fatigue uh so really they want you just to be comfortable for the first few days i was gonna ask do they give you any sort of care so yeah they definitely do they have a nursing staff to make sure because withdrawals can be very serious um so you need to be surrounded by medical staff very dangerous Mm -hmm. so they want you yeah they want you to be surrounded by medical staff so you felt safe going through that yes like they're very sympathetic to that absolutely Mm. yeah do you pack your own clothes? Yeah, pack your own clothes. Um, the place that I went to, it was very realistic in the sense that they let you keep your phones, where mm-hmm. a lot of rehabs, they don't. They take mm-hmm. away your phones. Um, you're able to bring your own clothes, things like that. So, which I, I actually enjoyed because it kind of set you up for real life when right. you leave. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So. Was it people of all ages there? All ages. All ages. And I'm, I mean, ages from 17 to 65. Wow. Yeah. 17. So then that, that one month you were there, mm-hmm. that took. Yes, it did. And you didn't have to go back after that? Mm-mm. That no, one month was it? And the, yeah. So we're coming up on a year and it's great because the facility is only 30 minutes from my house and I, I go out there once a week to, to my meetings. Um, so I'm able to check in with the staff and it's just that whole facility is a great support system. That's so, amazing. Yeah. So you had said that um, you had been drinking every day for mm-hmm. years. Mm-hmm. Now you have a young baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did that look like as a pregnant mom or a newborn mom? So pregnancy was hard because my addiction was well before I had my last child. Yeah. Um, didn't drink during that pregnancy, but it was as soon as I had him, I was off to the races. You were and waiting I, for and it. I, oh, I was waiting for it. And I really thought like, okay, I've been sober for nine months. I won't need to drink as much. No, that's just not, that's not realistic. That's not, that's not what the disease does. It picks up right where it let, where you've left off. So I picked up and the second I did, I went hard. I was, I was in it. So do you have guilt from that time when your babies were so little? Um, in the very beginning, I had a lot of guilt and shame and remorse because, you know, I was drinking when my son was, you know, up to well, when I went to rehab, he was 14 or 15 months old. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had a lot of guilt and I had a lot of guilt because I drove drunk with my kids. I know you mentioned that. Yeah. I, you know, I, I did. And I would I would do things that a sober person absolutely would never even think of. Mm-hmm. Um, so do I sit today and, you know, have so much rem- uh, remorse and guilt? N- no, but I think it's just such a good reminder for me that I need to remember those moments. Yeah. Yeah. Because if I don't, then I will drink again. Mm -hmm. I need to remember how bad it got for me. Yeah. Because if I just think, oh, it really wasn't that bad, Maggie, you can have another drink. Yeah. I will drink again. So I have to remember how tough it was Mm -hmm. and, you know, the time that was genuinely lost because I was literally just there. I wasn't a present parent. Mm -hmm. I was physically there, but was I engaging my, you know, my husband, he took on both roles when I was in my active addiction. He was dad and mom because I was drunk all the time. Yeah. You know, and um, even though I wasn't like, you know, a fall over drunk and I wasn't, you know, obnoxious drunk or you could even tell that I was drunk. Mm-hmm. Um, I I just I wasn't there. So, yeah. Yeah. You weren't dur- doing the same things. You probably are now. No. Right. And Not at all. Do you feel this sense of excitement now yes. in motherhood today yeah. as you're sober yeah. and you get to explore it? Yeah, absolutely. I feel like I'm relearning my kids. Mm-hmm. I'm relearning oh, my bet. husband. Oh, it's wild. Um, and I'm just able to, 
I don't know, just have these new experiences with my kids that I haven't been able to really enjoy. And I am. Yeah. Yeah. So I hear a lot of people who will say like, I'm getting sober for my husband. Mm -hmm. I'm getting sober for my kids. Is that what it felt like for you? Or was it, I had to get sober for myself first? I had to get sober for myself. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people who, um, you know, especially in rehab, you hear, well, my wife, my wife made me come. I don't want to be here. And I'm like, (laughs) I feel you. Yeah, I get it. You know? Um, and typically those are the people that relapse because they're not doing it for themselves. They're doing right. it for somebody else. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I knew that when I was going back for the second time that I really needed to do this right. Um, and I did. So I love that. Yeah. I'm so glad I'm you did. So go back a little bit farther here. Mm-hmm. Were you drinking young? Like, no. So and that's what I was going to ask. Like, yeah. Where did it begin? Yeah. Was it baby yeah. blues? Was it, exactly. It, so that's a great question. I get that a lot um, is, you know, was it motherhood that set this off? Right. Because my addiction really didn't. Me and my husband got married young. We started having kids young. Um, so as soon as I had Olivia, I was finishing up my senior year in college. And at that point, I had an addiction to Adderall. So uh, that's really where mm-hmm. it, it I, the flip of the switch. Those but college days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Up all night One studying. addiction to another. Absolutely. And really what happened was is, you know, I had been on Adderall since I was 14. I took it appropriately. Mm-hmm. And then it was just, you know, when I had, and I was still on it when I had Olivia. <clears throat> and it was just me trying to get through papers and homework. And I was like, you oh, know yeah. what? Just mm-hmm. pop an extra Adderall. Right. Yeah. And then once I did that, it was like, it absolutely switched. And then once that addiction went and it lasted for about five years until I just couldn't fill Adderall in the state of Texas anymore yeah. for yeah. reasons that I probably can't talk about. But um, <laughs> so I couldn't fill that anymore. And once I was about 26, when that um, that whole escapade stopped, I, I immediately got onto alcohol mm-hmm. because I just constantly wanted to change the way I felt. And I didn't know why. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to feel different than what I was feeling in that moment. Right. Yeah. That's interesting. So it wasn't like a depression that brought it on. No. It's just you needed that. Yeah. That, that, that like, escape. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Were you a stay-at-home mom? Yeah. So for the first couple of years with Olivia, um, I worked and then... When we moved to Sugarland, that's when I became a stay-at-home mom. And again, it really wasn't like that was the turning point. I think it was popping that extra Adderall that I was yeah. like, here we go. Mm-hmm. I like right. this. Yeah. I like the ride. Yeah. And that was it. Wow. And so, I just have an addictive personality. So it's yeah. just something that I have to constantly be aware of. Yeah. So. Wow. Are your kids, I know that some some of your kids are mm-hmm. a little bit older, yeah. at least, old yeah. enough to ask questions yeah. like, why has my mom been gone for a whole month? Yeah. Do they understand that side? Have you talked about it? Uh, yeah. So Olivia, you know, she's 12. So, she, you know, she's not six or, you know, right. seven like my, my middle is. But And 12 is not that young. I mean, we, no. we, we, right. we say it's young, but when you talk to a 12-year-old, yes. right. they're they're much more aware than you yes. think. Yeah. So we, we kind of explain to the kids, mom is going to go work on herself for a little bit mm-hmm. and, you know, she'll be back yeah and that was kind of the extent that we told them yeah and then when I got back and Olivia was just asking me more questions I kind of felt like I knew she was ready yeah. to to know why yes. I was gone and you know having that that genuine conversation with her and she and I, I just let her know I said if you have any questions you know please I, I want you to to come to me ask me those questions I want to talk to you about it yes um, and especially on my TikTok I, I get a lot of she comes home from school she's like mom a lot of my friends watch your TikTok. I was and that always say, makes did you me, worry about that? Yes, absolutely. And a lot of my mom friends, yeah, know, they watch absolutely. my TikTok. Yep. So um, I it, always forget that people in my real life like, can watch see you. Right. things that yeah. I upload. It's and then weird. they'll bring it up and I'll be like, oh. Yeah. like, oh, you, you see me? That. That. Paige it's does weird. it all the time. She's like, you watch that whole breakdown this <laughs> morning? I'm like, oh. yes. yes. <laughs> in my brain, it's not It's not real. It's not real, right? It's not the same as like when you see somebody. Like, I mean, I have friends that very good friends right that oh what's going on with the lights in here so Paige <laughs> oh like I'll have like a breakdown oh, yeah, yeah. and then I can have like my own best friend call me mm-hmm. and be like hey are you okay Literally. and I'm like I didn't mm-hmm. I, I didn't want you to call me and I check can on tell me. the, no. the mm-hmm. whole internet but now somebody real life no, no. Somebody real life, please I'm don't fine. contact yeah, me I don't Thank want you. you to check in I yeah. just wanted to vent yeah. there and then I was done yeah. and then I'm done yes. I'll respond to the people that I want to and then I don't yeah. I want to go back in the turtle show yeah uh-huh. I don't think Absolutely. people think we use TikTok as our outlet right like, yeah. exactly. I'm, I'm putting it out there because i know other people are going to relate to it right yep. but i don't want no one else to I call know. me about it I know. <laughs> no so, and i think that was the the weirdest part so when she would come home from school and you know be like 
these friends say they see my mom on TikTok. And I'm like, I just want to let you know that, you know, I do talk a lot about my sobriety. And if anybody comes and says something to you or whatever it may be, just come talk to me and I will yeah. answer whatever you need me to. I will talk to you about it. Just it, it's going to happen. Right. Yeah. So and especially like when I went to rehab for the first time, I put out a video um, just saying, hey, I I'm, I, I'm, I'm working on myself. Mm -hmm. And I had like my cousin, my aunt, my mom. Well, my mom already knew, but my, like, oh, my yeah. grandma, my everybody. 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 And I was like, shit. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. person you went to high school with three years uh -huh. ago is suddenly exactly. worried about you. Oh, yeah. But now oh, yeah. those videos are so powerful. And your yeah. sobriety yeah. is so powerful now. And more, it's like the meaning behind it. Yeah. like is huge yeah. like everybody is probably so proud of you and you hear that and you're probably proud of yourself because it is a feat to overcome it is like I said it's it it's been the hardest year a lot of tears have been shed um but it's been so worth it because it's connected me to so many people mm -hmm. it's just it's been amazing it really has and I'm just so glad that I was like you know what I think I'm gonna talk about it on TikTok um because it, like I said it's just being able to talk to other alcoholics or other addicts who have struggled, it's it's incredible. I think like you said, yes. there was so much shame. So much first. shame. And I'm sure mm -hmm. there, there are people who watch you yeah. that are doing what yeah. you are doing right Absolutely. now that are hiding it and that feel like I can't come out of this because I'm just so ashamed right. of what the reality will be. Absolutely. Because I think that's probably one of the biggest things is being afraid of, of the reality. Yeah. Of and the, reality. the guilt of like everything. Being that's embarrassed. Yeah. Being you can escape. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. So as you are now raising three children, mm -hmm. how will you go about, you know, teaching them about addiction? Because I would love to know this. I'm also raising three children. Yeah. She's raising teenagers currently. Yeah. Yeah. Like what is We're something close that to the years of experimentation? <laughs> yes. I'm worried. You know, I I think it's something that, you know, they're gonna grow up and they're gonna experience. Yeah. Um I I get the question, well, does alcoholism run in your family? Uh, yes. I do. I, I know that alcoholism runs my family on both sides. Um, so it is in their genetics. And it's something that I want them to be aware of. But am I going to tell them you absolutely cannot right. drink and do drugs right. and, 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 and experiment and do all the things? Because that's just not realistic. Well, and it only makes them want more. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So um, I think we're just going to kind of take it as it comes and just let them know where what I went through. Mm -hmm. And they can be just as informed with that. Rather talk about it right. than don't do that. Like, exactly. Because that's going to make me like, well, no. why not? Like, exactly. you did it, like, mm -hmm. you know, and so I'd yes. rather you experience it and yeah. let's talk about it and talk about how it could go. And Yeah. And that's just kind of like about, you know, interventions. That's why they don't work. Mm -hmm. It's just, right. you know, it's just, it just makes you want to do it harder. It's <laughs> nice to hear that from you because, you know, I know a lot of people whose family members struggle with yeah. addiction, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. things go yeah. on. And it's nice to hear from you that. Yeah. It's not going to happen unless you're ready yeah. for it. Because if we would intervene, yeah. if somebody would intervene on you, you would have been like, no, mm -mm. we're not doing that. And I've heard it both ways. Yeah, because I sure. mean, I, I have a sister who struggles yeah. in active addiction right now. Yeah. Um, and we have offered any and every route right. possible and Absolutely. have attempted to get her to, you know, get better because she's yeah. very very sick yeah um but she's just not very interested and 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 she will sometimes say okay mm -hmm. i'll go let's do this yeah. and i'll have everything set and it'll mm -hmm. be time to go and then she'll be gone yeah. and so i've heard it both ways as i've talked sure. to so many people in yeah. the communities as i opened up on tiktok about yeah. it because i didn't have any friends or family members that had ever had a sibling with addiction and yeah. it's also like there's just no legal help in this right. Right. state at right. all and, and i mean it could be for multiple states but we're obviously in the state of texas in kentucky there is a law casey's law yeah and right. i just don't understand why it's not federal i don't yeah. understand why it's not just across the board where a family member can go in and say i'm terrified that yeah. something horrible is going to happen. happen to my family right. member and they have no interest in getting this help yeah you know so i've had i've, I've had people say both ways where yeah. like i had somebody reach out and they were like you know if my family hadn't forced me Right, I, I probably right. would have True. never gone. Yeah, yeah. So I think definitely, it, yeah, it, it's probably both. But it is, it's good to hear yes, from somebody that says, you know, no, I, I wouldn't have unless it was my idea because there is so much guilt yeah, around is. it. Um, I feel like in, indebted to yeah. her in ways. Yes. A lot of things happened yeah. in, in in our childhood that I don't really care to go into right. in in depth, especially as it's not really my story to tell. But. Um, she was my protector yeah. in so many ways. And so now in, in these years where she's more vulnerable, yeah. 
I feel like her protector. And so many sure. people, even the lady, I went and I attempted to get her um, basically forcefully put into a rehab. Yeah. And they told me in the state of Texas, we can do it for 24 hours uh, only. Yeah. And then she can walk out. And I said, well, that's just going to piss her off. <laughs> exactly. She's just yeah. never going to talk to me again. So yeah. I didn't want to do that. Yeah. But, um, oh gosh, here's my ADHD again. <laughs> well, it's so hard for you to see that and not be able to step in right. when you want to. And even if she didn't yes. want the help, you wanting to try is important for right. that person. Yes. I think Absolutely. that's the guilt there. But I also think for a lot of addicts and alcoholics, they don't know where to start. Right. Yeah. So what you're saying is also another great point that what if you just got them into a good place right. and, and the then clear right. the fog yeah. and let that lift up and then the help is there. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And I think there's just, there is a, a majority of people yes. who, could benefit from something like that the or they feel like nobody so cares good. they are I they know. might they might also feel like nobody cares sure. yeah you know like, like her sister is not around her family and then mm -hmm. she's like uh -huh. well you're missing out on all of these things but then mm -hmm. her point of view could be like well y'all don't really care you know she that's, yeah. said to me i, I feel yeah. like everybody else's life just goes on and yeah. i said well, well it's not I mean, true it, it does inevitably because there's no pause button yeah but we still think about you right. every single day right. yeah. you know we still hope right. for for more but like you said i, I can't force her yeah i've yeah. tried yeah I, i've tried and and you know you, you just cannot force somebody who is not interested yeah and sometimes you know i think in, in my own personal way i think well uh, i would just do anything for my children right. so if yeah. i were right. struggling i would Absolutely. make that choice you know for my child but that is not within every single person it's some, not some people are struggling yeah. so deeply yeah yes. but it's just not within them to do that yeah and I, yes, I, I know agree. that my sister is one of those people yeah and that unfortunately because she she does not have custody of her children okay. unfortunately um that didn't that would have woken me up and probably many people losing right. your children would have probably but it doesn't for everybody terrifying. and but it, it doesn't, doesn't for, everybody. for everybody yeah mm -hmm. and that is just so yeah. hard to to see it I'm, is I'm so proud of you oh, i know thank you because you, you're, you're could have went it could have been really bad especially oh, drinking 100%. and driving drinking mm -hmm. with children 100 like percent. there it was it was a matter of time for me mm -hmm. you know? right so it, it really was either i was going to die from alcoholism at whatever age or i was going to end up killing myself my kids or somebody else right. yeah period that was that was that was my future yeah I mean, so that sounds ugly but that's the reality that, that is, is the reality the reality yeah yeah yep do so, you hold a lot of guilt with that oh sure oh, oh all sure. the time all the time and you go to weekly meetings you i said. do yeah do you do you talk about this oh yeah in in mm -hmm. those meetings where you're just like this oh, yeah. week i just feel oh yeah bad. All, oh all the time so um so i am a part of aa so i i try and make as many meetings as possible because your yes. girl needs it yes um yes. And, and they are helpful and um you know you get to you get to share your story with other alcoholics who are like yep that's me mm -hmm. um so you're in a room of comfortability essentially um you can be vulnerable you can tell it how it is those yeah. people get it and, yeah and then you know sometimes there'll be a newcomer in there listening and they're like holy shit this is a room mm -hmm. full of me yes mm -hmm. and then it clicks with them and you see that in them and it's it's just it's so great and that's why i love that you share online because i think that there are people who even yeah. will scroll across your video and be like yeah. damn like Absolutely. that's me right now yeah i i needed to see this yeah because that's me right now yeah I'm so sure it's it wonderful. comes with its own fair share of hate, Absolutely. as everything does online. Sure Absolutely. it does. <laughs> Absolutely, of course. So I have a question before. Um, is so now that you're you're you've been sober almost a year, mm -hmm. did everybody around you quit drinking? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. Um, so my husband. So in. September and October of 2022, that's when I was like, okay, because, because really what happened was how I came upon the whole, maybe I should get sober thing mm -hmm. was I was taking a shot of vodka at 930 in the morning and my husband walked in as I was tossing her back and he was like, what the what fuck are you doing? Are you doing? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that could, that's not good. Right. You right. know? And he's like, let's, let's look up some AA meetings. Aww, you know? yeah. So, and then he, we kind of jumped on this thing of, he was like, I'm going to get sober. So he's actually been sober longer than me. Granted, he's not an alcoholic or an addict. He just, he was like, I don't My need, choice. I don't need to drink. Yeah. So he still hasn't drank. Um, Lead by example too. He, right. Even though he's not a, you know, alcoholic, know, but still I amazing. Know. So yeah, <laughs> it really is. Um, which is very helpful to have a clean house. We yes. don't have alcohol in our house, yes. which, um, super helpful. Yeah, that would um, be triggering. But, you know, I've I've been able to do all of these life events. I've been to a bachelorette party in Nashville. Hello, sober. That's that's Wild. the ultimate that test is right there. It really is. I've been to weddings. I we've had the holidays. I've been through all of these great life events that typically people would drink at. Right. Mm -hmm. There's still people in my family that drink. And it, it doesn't and 
for me personally, being around alcohol doesn't bother me. Mm-hmm. And holy shit, am I grateful for that. Uh-huh. Right. Because you're going to have to be. Absolutely. And because there's a lot of people who yes. literally cannot be around alcohol. Right. Yeah. And I totally understand. Right. It's I, everywhere. I, I everywhere. It. It's everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but thankfully, I'm able to just have an iced tea and sit back and watch the craziness. I love that. So. <laughs> watch it all unfold. Yeah. Sometimes it is fun to be the sober it, one. It, it is. It, it can it be. It really can be. So. I also love like um, one of your videos popped up for me and I was <laughs> laughing because you were like, oh, you're coming up on one year. What are we going to do? Oh, yeah. And your your other personality was like, party or Invasive something. Invasive thoughts. It's yes. Wild. And those thoughts are still there for you. Sure. It, it's, you know, I was getting my nails done. I was getting my nails fixed yesterday and they had an open bar and I was like, mm-hmm. nobody would. And I'm like, shit, it's the, still what there. are you doing? You're yelling like, at yourself. Absolutely. So there is, you know, yes. I do have moments of these, this internal conversation, but for the most part, I'm like, that's a dumb idea. That's right. not a good idea. Well, I'm so proud so, of you. Thank you. I am so proud of you. What <laughs> a great you. role model you are. Oh, you're And I know sweet. it's hard. I know it's a struggle every day for you. So. It is, but it's worth it. Yes. Right. For sure. What's yeah. your most exciting thing now as a mom, as a sober mom that you get to do that you feel like you didn't do before? That's a, you know... I was never a morning person when I was drinking. And now I, I kind of am. I'm up with my kids. Yeah. I'm, but I'm more than anything, I'm just able to experience life with them and, mm. and these moments that I wouldn't remember. Um, so I'm, I'm just enjoying the little things that we have right now. And especially in the holidays, we've got fun little traditions. Yeah. And being mm-hmm. able to celebrate with them. That's that's it. That's the sweet spot. Right. I'm loving that's it. That's a special moment. It is. Yeah. So Sorry. if you were going to speak to... Yeah. Someone out there watching today. Yeah. A parent, a mom, anybody. Okay. What would you, if they are struggling with an addiction, what is something that you would tell them or give them advice on? I would say you don't have to do this alone. Um, that is first and foremost. You do not have to do this alone. Please don't. That. Please do not do this alone because you can't. It's not possible. Like I said, you know, when you take the weight of the world off your shoulders by letting those around you that love you and let them in on your struggles, mm-hmm. I promise you you'll be able to work on yourself and change your life, change your world. And it's, there's no going back. It's the best feeling. So being able to just let those around you know what you're struggling with, because nobody, whether you're an alcoholic or not, if you're struggling with something, you need to tell people, you need to talk about it. So I agree. Yeah, I agree. I know this is kind of random to your sobriety, but you have lost so much weight from not drinking. It's People wild. have been like, you're on Manjaro. You're on Ozempic. You're just like, you're just like a shot. light. You have like an energy about you. You're you really know? sweet. Um, <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it, I have. And it was one of those things that I genuinely didn't expect from it. Mm-hmm. Didn't, didn't think it would happen. Um, and then I just randomly, I was like, huh, this is fitting looser. That's weird. Um, and But then I realized, like, Maggie, you were drinking three gallons of vodka a week, yes. and now you're not. So. No, your videos are night and day. It's night and day. It, it doesn't even look like you. It's weird. It does, yeah. but it doesn't. But it doesn't at the same time. It, but it doesn't. And now, um, like uh-huh. I, told, I told you this earlier, I was following you then yeah. and had no, no mm-hmm. idea, had no clue. Yeah. And just like, she is quirky and hilarious. Look at her. She is just so cute, cracking them crab I'm sure you look back. <laughs> I'm sure you look back now, though. I still do it. Absolutely kills me. Oh, yeah. It's my favorite quote. I'll be like, no, Maggie. Don't do it. No, Maggie. Yeah, because that's right, because your husband's a dentist, (laughs) right? Yeah, yeah. I I was in the dental field for years, so it just... Oh, my God. It's okay. You know a guy when it happens. (laughs) I'm coming to page. Oh, my goodness. I'm coming to page. No, it's it's fun to watch you now. Yeah. Do you ever... I mean, I know that I do this. I look back on old videos on the whole... On this day. Same old time. And I'll be like, ew. Oh, yeah. I look so different. so different. Like, I'll be like, why did I upload that? Yeah, like, why did I press upload? I thought on that, that was one? cute. Yeah, is it hard for you to see those videos? Yeah. Uh, there's days where I'm like, you're so drunk. <laughs> you look so drunk. Because I know myself when yeah. I'm right. drinking. Yeah. And like I said, I'm not a, you know, I'm not stumbling everywhere. I'm not typically sl- slurring my words, is probably the first sign of me being drunk or just acting very sluggish. Um, but for the most part, I just kind of. I'm like this. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, I would have, I would have never yeah. known. And now if you guys go back and look at her videos from a year ago, mm-hmm. there's some where you can absolutely tell because then yeah. I, I remember those videos because the next morning I would wake up to a bunch of comments, people being like, are you okay? <gasps> really? I yeah. was going to ask if you were people getting noticed. comments where people like, were like, drinking? are you drinking? Are you on drugs? And oh, I would wow. be like, no, what are you talking about? <laughs> um, yeah. I'm a good Just yeah. food, I'm a good food wasted. Yeah. Food wasted. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Three gallons of vodka. Yeah. I'm fine. I 
doing fine, guys. Um, so yeah, it's it it is weird. Uh, it's very humbling. Oh, it I is bet. Very humbling. It so. is for us all. It's for us all. But I, I'm glad it's not triggering. At least, right? No. Is, I mean, yeah. if, right. There are certain moments where I'll look yeah. back at things and be like, Ooh. No, I just kind of look at those videos and I'm like, I just want to give her a hug. Oh, I, I love her. that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love she that. She was struggling. She was struggling. But she's doing great now. She's doing great. Y'all are sweet. Y'all are so sweet. And oh. you feel you feel good. I feel it, just I, I can't even describe it. I just feel like a whole other person. It took me 34 years, but I'll take it. You right. know, it, That's could, right. it could be much worse. You know, so That's right. we're just, we're take taking it and running with it. That's, That's it. Right. Ready yeah. to take life and motherhood by the balls. That's right. <laughs> Well, Maggie, it was such a pleasure having such you. Such a on. pleasure. Thank you for Thank having you for me yes. and talking with us. We're gonna eat some barbecue tonight. I'm so excited. Yes. You might have to do a little. Of course, I am. <laughs> Come and eat with me. Come on, guys. I want to be in the back of her video. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, it's Maggie. Yes, <laughs> and me. I that's right. Hey guys, it's Maggie. I know. It's I love that. Give a seafood boil. <laughs> so, so, do you? Your, your Maggie eats on yeah. TikTok and Instagram. Instagram, and I, I, I'm really bad at Instagram. Um, I just <laughs> upload my TikTok to my Instagram. Right. That's well, some it. people don't like to go on TikTok. I yes. have people who will be like, only on Instagram. Upload on Instagram because I don't Makes do sense. it there. Yes. yes. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to juggle both, but I just love TikTok so much more. Yeah. Yeah. So if people message you, is that okay? Yeah. You are a safe place. I'm a and safe I, place. That's a great yes. resource for some and of you. I do my best to get Someone back who gets to, it. I, yeah. And I do my best to, to respond to DMs. Sometimes I get kind of crazy ones and, yeah. I, you know, and that happens. That's normal. Um, but yes, I do respond and people are like, oh my God, you responded. And I'm like, yes, I'm a human. I'm a human. <laughs> I love that yeah. only because there's some people who relate to you. So yeah. it'd be nice to like oh, reach yeah. out to you and please, you get it. Please you know, especially do. if there's a mom who is an alcoholic. Like Absolutely. You're such a safe place. But it's ready safe, to make that safe step. place. Maggie, thank you again for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you for driving all this, <laughs> this way. This was such a fun time. This so really was. So it was great. With us. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, all right, guys. Nice. Remember, keep those giggles going. And the love flowing. And until next time, Mom, Mom knows, knows best. best. Or at least she's trying. She's trying. She's, she's trying. trying. That's it. She's trying her best. <laughs> Been a surprise.